Hey guys, Adam Young from Sentinel 3D Scanning here, and today we're going to be talking about GDNT. Now, GDNT, or Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing, is basically all of those fancy lines and symbols that you see on mechanical drawings. Things like flatness, parallelism, all of those dimension lines and leader lines. All of that stuff is what I look at as an inspector to understand what needs to be inspected. Now, if you're a Practical Machinist subscriber or you're watching this video, you probably already know what GDNT is, and instead you're here to just hear me rant for 10 minutes about why I hate GDNT. And don't worry, that is coming. But first, I do just want to say that I actually do really like GDNT. It has a lot of benefits for me as an inspector because if it's done correctly, it tells me exactly what I need to inspect with no ambiguity whatsoever. Problem is, it's not always done correctly, so without further ado, let's talk about some of the things that frustrate me about GDNT. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about that frustrates me about GDNT is just the sheer number of standards available. You've got, throughout the world, all of these different standards organizations, uh, ASME, ISO, there's some others out there as well. And I'm just going to show uh, a clip showing in SolidWorks all of the different standards you can choose from when drafting. There's a lot of them. And then on top of that, within each of these standards organizations, you have a whole bunch of standards, not just one. It would be simpler if it was just one, but for example, in ASME, for me to really understand this stuff well and do things correctly, I've got to have the main standard, I've got to have this mathematical definitions standard. In order to report properly, I've got to have this reporting standard. Uh, if I was doing injection, injected molded parts, I'd have to have another standard that's specific to that. So there are just too many standards. And on, on top of all that, they're going to come out with a new standard every 10 years or so. And of course, when that happens, you're going to have to purchase that new standard. You're going to have to spend time learning it. And it's just too many standards. <laughs> and I really wish and hope that someday uh, maybe we can get together and decide, you know, hey, we're just going to narrow it down to these standards or we're going to combine standards and make it more concise. I think things are kind of trending in that direction, but it's just going to take time and hopefully they can find a simpler solution that just has fewer standards and not so many things to learn. So the second thing I want to talk about that frustrates me with GDNT is basically how complicated it is. I mean, this stuff is complicated. I've, I've heard it called, gee, this is dang tough. That's what GDNT stands for, is gee, this is dang tough. And it is, it is tough. If it takes 325 pages to fully describe what GDNT is, it's complicated. Previous jobs I've been in, what has typically happened is they've had these really brilliant engineers come from these Ivy League schools. These engineers have been designing their parts and then I guess the natural step after that is to create their mechanical drawing for that part. Problem is, these students, and it was the same way for me going to uh, engineering school, these students have only had maybe one class period of GD&T in their entire four-year degree. So they end up making this drawing. It's a really bad drawing. It's not very inspectable. Nothing's really correct per the standard. Then they'll take this drawing, they'll send it over to the supplier in China, and they're not gonna question them on it. They're just going to, you know, a lot of these places will just give fake data anyway. <laughs> and the engineer never really understands how to make their drawing better. So it's kind of this endless cycle of people not understanding GD&T. And I understand why. It's because this is too thick. Um, it needs to be made more simple. And we need to spend more time educating people or having engineers send their drawings to drafters that actually understand how this stuff works, how things are gonna get inspected, so that we can actually improve our processes at these companies. One of the main things that makes the standards confusing, I think, is just how there are multiple ways to accomplish the same thing. So here we are looking at a SolidWorks drawing and looking at this position tolerance here in the center of the drawing, we can see that it's called out with respect to datum A with a tolerance of 0.01 millimeters. But then we hop over to the second page and I've just drawn this a different way. Now we have it a perpendicularity with respect to datum feature A with the same tolerance. And these tolerances are doing the exact same thing. 
Just for another example, looking at the first page here again, we have a surface profile tolerance with respect to datum feature A. And then hopping over to the second page, we have a dimension origin tolerance on the same feature. And once again, two different ways of doing it, but they're controlling the exact same thing. And in regards to like, why are these standards so complicated? The original standard was written and now it's just kind of difficult to remove things from the standard. So it seems like they are slowly reducing the standards, uh, you know, throwing different symbols out, but it's just gonna take time. And anytime you have to get 15, 20 people into a room that are all passionate about something and get them to agree on something, that's gonna be a hard thing to do. So I understand why it's complicated, but hopefully they can find a way to speed up the process and to try to make this thing, this book simpler. So the next thing that annoys me about GD&T is just how ambiguous some of this stuff is. There's a lot of practices that kind of worked their way into GD&T uh, from the early years, and a lot of things that were technically legal, but were actually very ambiguous. The, the drawing would look good, maybe it would be completely correct per the standard, but then, then you give it to the inspector on the CMM, and they're immediately going to have questions about what do you mean by this, what do you mean by that? How am I going to enter this into my CMM program? Here we are at our SolidWorks drawing again, and as you can see, we have a lot of linear dimensions on this drawing coming from the edges over to these holes on the part. And these are super ambiguous because if this hole isn't quite perpendicular, and they never are, to the top and bottom surfaces, it's going to be very confusing for the inspector to know how to inspect this. For instance, you could inspect from the edge to the middle of a axis fit to that feature using any number of fitting methods. Or you could uh, take the max distance, or you could take the min distance, or you could take the average distance. There's just so many different ways to do it. These linear dimensioning practices have always been as part of the standard, but it hasn't been until recently that they've started to make it more clear that these methods are ambiguous. This is something that I think has slowly been improving over time. In fact, in the latest version of ASME Y14.5, they actually have a mandatory appendix that basically says, hey, a lot of these older practices, they are ambiguous and you should not use them. So these things are starting to go away. Hopefully folks can read that appendix and start changing their ways. Another thing that I'll see is people trying to cram as many views onto a single page of a drawing as possible. And we just don't have to do that anymore. We live in the digital age where you can give somebody a PDF. Make your drawing 100 pages long if you have to. As long as you can easily tell where the leader lines are going, uh, when, whenever you have a lot of parallel edges, as long as you can tell where those dimensions and tolerances are pointing to, make, make your drawing as big as it needs to be. So the next GD&T topic I want to rant a little bit about is inspection software. So what will happen is the engineer or the drafter will make this drawing, they'll make a part, and then at some point in the manufacturing process, somebody's going to have to inspect this part based on that drawing. Unfortunately, there's a lot of inspection software out there that doesn't stay up to date with GD&T very well. You'll have like a CMM software or a vision system software or a point cloud analysis software, 3D scan analysis software. And a lot of these softwares are actually lagging behind the standards. And that's in a couple different ways. For instance, it might not support all of the different cases, all of the different modifiers. They might also only support the latest version of the standard and not previous versions of the standard. Sometimes they'll only focus on ISO where they'll only focus on ASME and then that other standard kind of gets left by the wayside. So there's a lot of different ways that these softwares fail to adhere to GD&T standards. And, you know, I don't blame these companies. I, I think the reason that this is, is because software is very time consuming and expensive to develop. I know from firsthand experience, a lot of times these softwares are kind of forced to work on other things, things like uh, supporting new CMMs that come out routinely, or focusing on the latest buzzword like Industry 4.0 and throwing development resources at that. Meanwhile, the, the software kind of goes stagnant in regards to its support of GD&T, and yeah, all the new features are nice, but at the end of the day, I as an inspector, I've gotta be able to do my job. I've gotta be able to inspect every tolerance that's on my drawing. 
If I can't do that, I'm gonna to have to go out and buy a second machine or a second piece of software that's gonna be able to do that. So just the last thing that I wanna do in this video real quick is to make one plea for those of you watching. If you are one of those people that's responsible for creating mechanical drawings, just really make sure that you understand how to apply GD&T. Make sure you understand how that GD&T will be implied in the QC lab or in the metrology lab, wherever your parts are being inspected. It's certainly going to make my life easier. It's going to make the lives of metrologists and inspectors easier. GD&T, in order for it to work, we have to understand it and we have to apply it correctly. If you are watching this video and you're thinking of something that has frustrated you about GD&T in the past, make sure to drop it down in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. I love venting about GD&T with people. And also make sure to do that other YouTube -y stuff like subscribing and liking. And of course, I have to just do one quick shameless plug for my business. If you have a part and a drawing, and maybe that drawing has GD&T on it, and you want to have it inspected, or maybe you have a part but no CAD model, and you want to have it reverse engineered, make sure to check out my business, Sentinel 3D Scanning at sentinel3dscanning.com. With that said, best of luck to you on your GD&T journey, and have a great day.